thank you for joining me on this adventure. Your presence means the world to me. Welcome, friends, to our video dedicated to Mary Elizabeth Wilson Sherwood. Let's dive right in and uncover its wonders. Mary Elizabeth Sherwood pen names, M. East, W. S. M. E. W. Sherwood, Mrs. John Sherwood, Nee Wilson, October 27, 1826, September 12, 1903, was an American author and socialite. She wrote short stories, poetry, several books, and etiquette manuals, in addition to contributing to many magazines and translating poems from European languages. Among her writings are The Sarcasm of Destiny, A Transplanted Rose, Manners and Social Usages, Sweet Briar, and Roxable. Better known as Mrs. John Sherwood, some of her literary works were published as M.E.W.S. or M.E.W. Sherwood. Sherwood gave readings in parlours for charitable objects, making selections from her own works, and made eight trips to Europe. She was decorated with the insignia of Officer de Cademy. In the next portion, we'll be immersing ourselves in the realm of early years and education and examining its broader implications. Mary Elizabeth Lizzie Wilson was born in Keene, New Hampshire, October 27, 1826. She was the eldest daughter of General James Wilson II, a member of Congress from New Hampshire, and Mary Loney Richardson Wilson. Mary had three younger brothers and three younger sisters. When her father was in Congress, the family lived in Washington, District of Columbia. Soon after his election, Mary's mother died, leaving her the responsibility of taking care of the large family. She was intelligent, received a thorough education, and was acquainted with George Bancroft, John Mothrop Motley, William Cullen Bryant, William H. Prescott, and others. Her first literary work, at the age of 17, was an essay on the novel of Jane S. sent to the New York Tribune in 1848, which attracted much friendly criticism. Get ready for an enlightening exploration as we dig into family and understand its role in the broader context. On November 12, 1851, while living in Washington, D.C., she married John Sherwood, a lawyer from New York City, who died in 1894 or 1895. Their family consisted of four sons. James Wilson Sherwood died in infancy. John Philip Sherwood died at the age of 24. Samuel Sherwood became an artist. Arthur Murray Sherwood, the broker, was the father of Robert East. Sherwood, playwright, editor, and screenwriter. Now, let's shift our perspective and explore career through a fresh lens, unlocking new perspectives. Sherwood's literary work included correspondence with eminent men and women abroad, and many contributions to the Atlantic Monthly, Harper's Bazaar, Scribner's Magazine, Appleton's Journal, The New York Tribune, The New York Times, The New York World, and Frank Leslie's Weekly. For years, she was a correspondent for the Boston Traveler. Her work in journals, from Maine to Oregon, would fill many volumes. Among her published books were The Sarcasm of Destiny, New York, 1877, Home Amusements, 1881, Amenities of Home, 1881, A Transplanted Rose, 1882, Manners and Social Usages, 1884, Royal Girls and Royal Courts, Boston, 1887, and Sweet Briar, Boston, 1889. She wrote many poems, to which she signed the initials, M.E.W.S., and translated some poems from European languages. She contributed some 300 short stories to various magazines and newspapers, many of which appeared anonymously. For years, Sherwood travelled extensively in Europe. There, she formed the acquaintance of Queen Victoria, and had three interviews with Margarita of Savoy, the Queen of Italy. Among her many testimonials of recognition abroad, she was decorated with the insignia of Officer de Cademy, an honour conferred by the French Minister of Public Instruction on persons who distinguished themselves in literary pursuits. It is said to be the first time this decoration was conferred upon an American woman. In 1883, the Sherwoods experienced financial losses which forced them to sell their home and furnishings in New York City. In 1885, Sherwood gave readings in her home in aid of the Mount Vernon Fund, and they became so popular, 
that she continued them for several years, giving the proceeds to charity, realizing over in that way. Her readings comprised essays on travel, literature and history. Sherwood served as president of Cassaries, a literary gathering of distinguished New York women, and she was a member of several benevolent societies. In Sherwood's parlors hung the original drawings and paintings of her two artist sons. One was by Samuel, of his brother Philip, taken just before Philip's death, several were by Philip. In his name, Sherwood contributed to the funds of the Home for the Destitute Blind, the Street Joseph's Hospital, the Kindergarten for the Blind, the Woman's Exchange, the New York Diet Kitchen, the Manhattan Hospital and Dispensary, the Home of Street Elizabeth and various other schemes to care for children. She did much to advance literature and science in New York City. She died suddenly at the Hotel Majestic on Central Park West between 71st and 72nd Streets in Manhattan on September 12, 1903, aged 76. In the upcoming section, we'll be shining a light on selected works. Metropolitan Fair for the U.S. Sanitary Commission, receiving depot to Great Jones Street, New York, 1864. A great exhibition called the Metropolitan Fair will be opened in the city of New York, March 28. 1864. The proceeds of the sales to be for the benefit of the Sanitary Commission. 1864. The Sarcasm of Destiny or Nina's Experience, New York. 1877. Home Amusements. 1881. Amenities of Home. 1881. A Transplanted Rose. A Story of New York Society. 1882. Uncle Archie's Cane. 1882. Manners and Social Usages. 1884. Royal Girls and Royal Courts, Boston. 1887. Sweet Briar, Boston. 1889 Poems 1892 Washington Before the War 1894 Joseph Smith and the Mormons 1897 An Epistle to Posterity 1897 Here and There and Everywhere Reminiscences 1898 New York in the 70s 1898 Etiquette The American Code of Manners A Study of the Usages, Laws and observances which govern intercourse in the best circles of American society the art of entertaining. Your feedback helps me improve, so please take a moment to leave a comment or review.